So we've got another definition here, right? And I'm, I'm building up to a rule that will let us do what's called an at least probability, finding the probability of getting at least one or at least 10, for example. Uh, in, in a way that's easier than using the kind of the counting methods we've seen before, right? So to, to do this, we, we need to understand what a complementary event, what complementary events are. Two events are complementary if they represent together the only two possible outcomes of an experiment. So I, I've got some examples of some events here, A, B, C, and D. And what I want to do is I want to think about what the complement of each one is. So if A is you draw a red card, then the complement of A is you don't draw a red card, right? It really kind of is as simple as that. Or of course, we could also phrase this as you draw a black card, right? Because the cards are all either red or black. All right, so how about B? B is you roll an even number. Well, the complement would be you don't roll an even number, which is the same as you roll an odd number. So you see what I'm doing here, right? In each case, B in the complement, A in the complement, they cover all of the possibilities when you put them together. All right, so C, you roll at least one six on three rolls. In other words, you, you get one, you maybe get two, you, may, you maybe get three sixes, right? You get 18 total. All right, so what, what is the complement of this? Well, the complement of this is you roll no sixes, right? Think about, think about those, those cases I went through. At least one six means one six. It could mean two. It could mean three. What's left? Well, it's rolling none, right? Rolling no sixes. So D, a family uh, with four children has all boys. What would be the complement? Um, you could say, and you see, you, you don't want to say has no boys. You got to be careful about this, right? Because three boys and one girl would, would be not four boys, right? So that one counts. So when I, when I want to do the, the, the complement of an all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say at least. So this is has at least one girl. Okay, so what does this mean in terms of probabilities? Well, we have this thing, right? It's called the complement rule. It says if A and B are complementary events, then the probability of A plus the probability of B is equal to one. And hopefully, I mean, if you think that through that, that makes sense, right? Or if, you, if you think of this as percentages, Right, if you think of that one as being 100%, right, an event happens or an event doesn't happen, that's 100% of the possible results. That's what this formula is saying. Right now, this formula gives us a, a, a really slick tool for doing some probabilities. So look, look at this one. What's the probability that a family with four children has at least one girl? Okay. If I wanted to do this the old-fashioned way, theoretically counting up possible results, well, I have to count up all of the families with one girl and all the families with two and all with three and all with four. That can get a little long. We actually did that earlier on, right? An earlier example. But I'd kind of like to avoid it if I can. All right, so here, here's how I'm going to approach this, right? Probability, uh, let, let's let A, B has at least one girl. Okay, then what is the complement of A? Complement of A is has no girls, which is the same as all boys. Okay, that one is much easier to calculate. All right, so look, here, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use my rule. The probability of A plus the probability of the complement of A is equal to one. Well, the complement of A I can do. We, we, we've kind of talked about this already. There is only one way to have all boys, and there are 16 possible combinations of boys and girls in groups of four. So this has to equal one, 
I'm going to leave that alone. Well, look at what I can do now, right? To get the probability of A, I just have to solve this little equation. Subtract 1 16th from both sides. The probability of A is 1 minus 1 16th, which is 15 sixteenths, or you can go to your calculator and make that into a decimal. That's fine, too. All right. So I'm going to this a little, a, little, a little bigger, a little busier. You can pause if you need to. Uh, re read this over before I, before I start talking about it. Um, the, the idea here is that medical testing can be expensive. Right? So if you have a, a disease that you're testing for, a condition that you're testing for, and that condition is rare, right? That, that's less than 1% of the population. Then what, what you can do is you can take a bunch of samples mix them together right and and test the mixture right because the idea here is is that the, the likelihood is pretty high that it's going to come out with a a negative result none of this none of the individual samples had the condition right and then you saved a lot of money right you, you saved doing I, i'm talking about five samples here so instead of paying five times the cost, you only paid it once. All right, so what I want to know here is what is the probability that a mixture of samples tests positive? Okay, well first, uh, it, it helps to define our terms. Okay, so I'm going to let A be has a positive result. And the question says the probability of getting a positive result is 0 0.009. Okay. So what does it mean for a sample to test positive? Well, if if the if the mixture has just one positive, if just one of the five was positive, I'm going to get a positive result. But two will also give me a positive result. So will three, four, and five. All right. So what I'm what I want to do here is I'm trying to calculate the probability of at least one positive. That would give me a positive result from the mix. Okay. But and and that that's unpleasant to try to calculate. All right. Because I got to I got to do it. What's the probability of getting four? Three, two, one. It, it's we actually could do it, and we're going to talk about that a little later on. But I'd rather not. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. What is the complement of at least one positive? Right. The problem. The at the complement of that is no positives. Probability. No positives. Right. Well, this has to equal one. That's our complement rule. Right now, um, probability of no positives. We, we, how, how do we know no positives? Well, look, no positives. Remember, I'm always trying to go back to thinking ands versus ors. Right? No positives is the same as all negatives. Right? So this is the probability at least one positive plus the probability all negative. Well, what, what, what's that mean, all negative? That means the first one is negative and the second one is negative and the third one and the fourth one and the fifth one. So this is now, you see I'm interpreting this as an and probability. So this is the probability at least one positive plus the probability negative and negative and see if I can fit them all in here get all get all five I need two more and almost made it there we go and this has to equal one all right well what what's the probability of getting a negative result right because all I have over here is positive but look again positive result negative result those are complements right because they're the only two possibilities. So if the probability of A is 0 0.009, 
then the probability of the complement is 1 minus that, which is 0.991. That was what I needed to know, right? So this is the probability at least one positive plus, now I have an and, and these are independent events, right? There's no reason to believe that one sample somehow affects the other. So all I have to do is multiply 0.991 by itself five times, right? So I'm going to cheat. I'm going to write that with an exponent. And there's my calculation. Move this over, subtract it from both sides. The probability of getting a positive result, of getting at least one positive, is 1 minus 0.991 to the fifth which is 0, 4, 4, 2. Four and a half percent, give or take. Okay, so that's a pretty decent outcome. Four and a half percent of the time, you're going to get a positive result, and you're going to have to go back and split them up and do them all separately, take the hit to the cost for, for doing all the individual tests. The remaining... What, 96, 95.6 something percent? The remaining 95.5% of the time, you're going to save the cost of doing those four other tests, right? Because you're going to get a negative result. Okay, so this, um, this is good, right? We've added another kind of probability to our toolbox. All right, so in the, in the next lecture, it's going to be the last one in our, in our probability series. Uh, we're going to talk about how to do an AND probability when the events are dependent.